on uh, estimation with complete data, right? Is the following uh, notation. So we need a few things that will come back today. And we just want to be sure that we've got that in, in, in mind. So we start from a sample, say x1 up to xn. So these could be uh, n records on claim frequencies or claim severities or whatever, right? So that's the sample that, that we have. And we're going to um, introduce a notation to indicate the unique values uh, of, the, of the outcome variable that we observe in this data set. So we're going to denote from now on the y1, y2, etc., up to the yk as the unique values in the sample. So that's a notation we're going to rely on today. We ordered those y's from small to large. Right, and we say that there are k unique values observed in this sample. Now, then you can also denote the number of times that you observe each of those k unique outcomes. And we're going to denote that with, with s. So s1 up to sk, that's the number of times uh, a certain outcome or a certain value yj is observed. Okay, so that's what sj is. And then, of course, if you put all those sj's together, so if you take the sum of all those sj's, then you're back with the total number of observations, which you have observed in your sample, and, and that was n, right? My sample size is, is n, so the sample size equal to n. And then the last thing I, I want to point out, and then we're ready to go if, if we have this recap of this uh, notation. The last thing is that we then also introduce a so-called risk set. And the risk set for observation yj is denoted with rj, and it contains the total number of observations, so si, for i going from j to k. So it's the total number of observations from the sample, which are larger than or equal to the yj, right? So it's, it's in fact the size of the risk set that is denoted here with the rj. Okay, so that's what, um, sorry, that was what, in, what, what, what was introduced in uh, the previous uh, class. And this will be some uh, notation that we'll see coming back today. So keep that in mind. Uh, in particular, this, this, this last bit of notation might be something, um, might be something new. And so we're gonna define the risk set. We're gonna look at the size of the risk set. So that's the total number of observations, which uh, take values larger than or equal to a certain outcome, y, j. That's what we're gonna start with. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the sheets for today, and that's the deck of sheets. That's the deck of sheets starting from here. So these are the sheets covering the estimation for modified data, right? So I'm going to explain, first of all, what we mean with modified data. And then in this deck of sheets, we're going to start with, a, um, with an empirical, with a non-parametric estimator to have some grip on the uh, survival function or the cumulative distribution function in the presence of modified data. And then in the next chapter, we will see if you want to fit a parametric model uh, to, this, uh, to this given uh, sample with modified data, then how would, you, how would you do that, right? But first of all, we're going to start with some empirical tools. So this is what uh, is being covered in chapter 12 from our book. So chapter 11 was the one I asked you to review uh, last week. Um, and today we're going to move on with chapter 12 and 13. Right, so here is the notation of which I gave a recap using the iPad. Yeah. So uh, this is something uh, that we discussed on the iPad. So that's something we have in mind. And the, the kind of data that I want to picture or that I want that I want you to, to picture 
for the uh, first half of this, uh, for the first part of today's class is the following data set. So it's a data set from the book. It's introduced in chapter 11, we call it data set uh, D2. And it contains information on 40 um, policy holders. And we observe these policy holders during a certain time interval indicated by first observed and last observed. And we observe certain events that can happen during the, the lifetime, let's say, of this policy holder. So whenever when we have the notation S, it means that the policy is canceled because our client, our policyholder, decides to surrender, decides to lapse or churn the contract, right? Whenever there is a D, it means that we observe the death of our policyholder. Whenever there is an E, it means that the contract expires. So that means that we, that we reach the end of the policy duration uh, and that we stop observing the policyholder of the, or the contract because the contract has expired, right? So these are the three events that can take place. There is surrender, there is death of the policyholder, and there is expiration of the, of the period, of, of the policy period considered. And then you also have to keep in mind this first observed and this uh, last observed. So that's the interval during which we uh, follow the policyholder. And for the first 30 observations in the data set, that interval starts from time zero. So let's say that that is the onset of the period during which we follow our contracts, right? But for the last um, 10 observations in the data set, you see that those enter the period of study at a later point in time. Huh? So for example, if you look at contract number 40, here the policyholder only enters the study at time 3.9. And before that time, we did not follow this uh, policyholder in our uh, observation window. Right? So this is something to keep in mind. Uh, and what we want to do now is we want to get grip on data sets with this kind of structure uh, to give one example, right? Because there are a few phenomena that are included here. There is the phenomenon of left truncation. There is the phenomenon of right censoring. And we want to visualize the empirical data, which are here subject to left truncation, right censoring. We want to visualize them in a correct way. Way. And we will see that you cannot just do that by plotting the cumulative distribution function of the observed times of the event that you're interested in, but you need to take this right censoring and this left truncation into account. All right? That's the story for uh, the beginning here. Okay. So, uh, a recap on censoring and truncation. So of course, and we discussed this already, it's not unusual for data to be incomplete because of censoring or truncation. And what was truncation then? Uh, again, you can have truncation from below, you can have truncation from above. So truncation from below also denoted as left truncation. If that happens at a certain value D, it means that when your observation is at or below D, it's just not recorded in the data set. But when it is above D, it is recorded at its observed value, right? So a typical example of left uh, truncation in an insurance context would be a deductible. Uh, you don't see the loss unless the loss exceeds a certain uh, deductible, a certain own risk uh, threshold, right? Um, so that's first example, left truncation. You can also have right truncation. So an observation is right trunc truncated at a value of u. It means that if it is at or above u, it's simply not being recorded in the sample. But when it is below u, it is recorded at its observed value. Huh? So the important thing with truncation to keep in mind is that it creates missing data. So you're going to miss on certain observations because they just do not go over the threshold or they go over the threshold in case you have a right truncation. And for that reason, they do not appear in the sample. Yeah, I've got a visual uh, coming up uh, next. So let's first go to the definitions of censoring. If you look at the definition of censoring from below or left censoring at a value of D, it means that if your observation is at or below D, it is recorded as being equal to D. But when it is above D, it is recorded at its observed value, right? So it means 
you observe part of the uh, original underlying observation, but you don't observe this information in complete detail. So an example of left centering, I also I always find that very difficult to find huh, because in insurance, uh, the more common case is the one of right censoring. But if you would ask me for an example of left censoring, maybe we could think of something like, um, we could ask a policyholder who files a certain claim, we could ask him or her, yeah, when did this claim happen, right? Uh, when did this claim happen? We want to know that, we want to keep track of the occurrence date, reporting date of our claims. Uh, but what if the policyholder forgot about the precise occurrence date of this uh, accident or this uh, insured event that happens? Then maybe he or she can say, yeah, this happened uh, at least two weeks ago. Um, yeah, this happened, uh, and now I should be careful how I frame it, but this happened, um, yeah, something like uh, this happened a maximum of two weeks ago or something. I guess that could be an example of, of live left censoring, right? Where you don't remember exactly how long it is, how long it was, uh, how long it was uh, ago, but you do uh, observe or you do remember that it cannot be longer ago than 14 days, right? So in that case, the, um, the reporting delay of my claim, so the time that occurred between the occurrence of the accident and the reporting of the accident, that is less than uh, two weeks, but you don't know uh, how much it um, was exactly. Yeah, so that could be an example of left sensor. Another example, which is way more familiar in an insurance context is the right censoring. So an observation is right censored at a value U. If, if it is at or above U, it is recorded as being equal to U. But if it's below U, it is recorded at its observed value. So an example of that could be, what did I pay so far on a claim? Right? Then you know, okay, up to now I paid 10,000 euros uh, to, to reimburse my client for this particular claim. But I do know that the claim is not yet closed. So I do know that in the very end, I will pay even more than 10,000 euros to my client, but I don't know how much more exactly. And the claim can end up with an amount of 20,000 euros, but could also end up with an amount of 11,000 euros. So then we say the claim amount paid so far is right censored at 10,000 euros. So let's try to picture all these um, different situations. And like I already uh, tried to explain with insurance data, we're particularly looking at left truncation right censoring. And that's really the most common uh, phenomenon. The Ordinary deductible D is an example of left truncation. The, the policy limit is an example of right censoring. We already encountered that earlier. Here I've got a few pictures. So um, it's not a real quiz, but I would like you to think about which picture uh, visualizes uh, left truncation and which picture um, visualizes, well, they both visualize uh, the right censoring, but where would you say, um, do we also see some, some left truncation uh, coming in? On the left picture or on the right picture? What do you think? What I have on the x-axis is here the time since uh, diagnosis in a certain uh, medical study, let's say. And then on the right, sorry, on the left, I follow everybody in the study from time zero on. Um, whereas on the right, uh, if I look there, if I look at the right, then I do not have all my patients since diagnosis, but some records or some patients I only start following them after a certain while, right? So that means if the event of interest would have occurred before the start of the follow-up of this particular uh, patient, then I would not register this particular event in my data set because of the left truncation, right? So 
you see that to a certain extent here in uh, the pictures. We have the events of interest indicated with a, with a cross, and we have the censored observations here indicated with a bullet. And so we see that this data set pictured over here is subject to uh, two right censoring as well. And then on the right, we also see the left truncation coming in because there we don't have the full timeline of uh, patients, or, or at least not of all patients, we have their full timeline. These pictures were taken from a, a course on survival analysis uh, by the professor mentioned over here. So I think it's a very nice course. So if you're interested in seeing a couple of extra visuals uh, and some instructions uh, on survival analysis with R, I can highly recommend to take a look at the GitHub site underneath this um, hyperlink. I got another visual as well. And this one is more from, from our context. So it's more from a sort of from a, um, an insurance context. Um, perhaps not easy. And so there is a lot that we try to picture uh, over here. It's a display that um, was made for an article with my colleagues, uh, Tom Rankins, uh, Jan Berland. Uh, and we try to picture a lot of different things here on, on, on one visual. We've got the truncation on the one hand. And we've got uh, different possibilities for censoring on, uh, on the other hand. Yeah? So let's pick a few of them. Um, well, first of all, if you look at event A, that is an event which is uncens uncensored, which is also uh, not subject to left or right truncation. So you see here the full loss, if you want, or the full event that you're interested in. Why is that? Because my loss or my event goes above the lower truncation point, stays below the upper truncation point, and there is no censoring going on over here. So that would be an example of a complete uh, observation. 